What's going on YouTube? Back in the garage again. In this video we're going to be replacing the dampers for the rear wheel on a Honda Grom. Uh, I got right here genuine Honda ones. Uh, I believe they cost me from the dealership. I think they were like only seven bucks or something. They're really cheap. Uh, so if you see yours are ripped uh, in two or they're starting to deteriorate, definitely, definitely replace them. It's a really simple job, but I just want to go over on how to do it just in case somebody is not sure on how to replace the dampers. Um, but before we get into it, please like and subscribe. I greatly appreciate it. It gives me more motivation to make, out the, make these videos for YouTube. All right, let's just jump right into it. All right, guys, first thing you want to do is you're going to want to loosen your uh, locking lock nut for on both sides for your chain tensioner. Uh, in order to do that, you hold the inner nut with a 12 millimeter wrench and the outer nut is going to be a 10 millimeter. Just break the, hold the 12 millimeter with the open end wrench and break the outer 10 millimeter uh, loose, and loosen that up pretty good. Then you can start backing out the 12 until it's nice and loose. Do that to the other side also. Loosen it up real good. All right, the next step you want to do is you're going to want to loosen the axle bolt itself. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come to the back of the bike and on the nut side, which is a 19 millimeter, I'm going to put a ratchet on that one and put a 14 millimeter on this side. Make sure I have this. Let's go in the right direction. Let's go in the right direction. Uh, I'm going to actually torque on the nut side, so just break that loose. tap on the nut side, as long as there's no thread sticking out, I'm going to tap the, the whole bolt over just a little bit. At this point, if you're, obviously if your motor is still in your grom, you're going to want to hit your rear wheel until you get slack on the tire, or the chain itself. Then simply pull the chain off to the side of the sprocket. Alright, the next step that you want to do is after you got your your chain loosened up and off the sprocket. Take off your uh, 19 millimeter nut on this side and it will have a washer. Keep them together, set them aside. Uh, then you're going to want to pull the bolt completely out. What I find that works is just set your ratchet on this one on the 14 millimeter side and put it on loosen and start turning it loosen and let the threads of the bolt pull itself through. Uh, if you find it, feel it binding up, stop and uh, reassess what you're doing. Uh, but it should just slide right out. Um, once you get a good portion out, it should just pull right out. Um, now your caliper is going to, caliper bracket is on the same, uh, sitting on that bolt. Same if there's a spool piece inside there and there's a spool piece on the side of here with your, your uh, sprocket. All that stuff is inner, uh, all tied together. So when you pull this, the uh, bolt, bolt out, all that, all those pieces are going to ultimately come out too. So be cautious when you're doing this that you don't lose those little pieces. Pull this out. Now you can. There's play on a rear wheel. You can move it up and down now. I'll be able to pull that axle completely out. There's one spool piece for the left side. Upper drop down, which is fine. I'm gonna let it hang there for a moment. And then there should be another spool piece right here. Set that off to this side. Okay, now your rear, rear wheel is off. All right, uh, next step I'm going to do is I'm going to I set the wheel. Basically, I took a singer, cinder block and put some microfiber cloth on it, and I set the wheel uh, nice and gentle 
on the center block sitting on the microfiber cloth so I don't scratch up my uh, brake rotor. Now this where your sprocket is it should just pull right out and underneath is where your bushings are that you need to replace. Let me show you here as you can see mine are ripped in two places. This one about to go and they're starting to get all cracked and just worn out so they definitely need to be replaced okay pull all those out while I'm in here I'm gonna make sure this bearing is good which it does look perfectly fine all right now I got my new bushings I'm just simply just slide them in this into their spots with the the pair piece of rubber joining them will bridge across the section of your hub here. You know, just snugly press right in. After they're all in, now I can put my sprocket back on. Examine it. Oh, and another thing, there is another spool piece inside of here. Usually it sticks in there. Uh, if it didn't, just simply uh, pop it back in. The coned skinny part will be facing the bearing and the fatter part obviously will sit inside the uh, looks like a, a seal of some sort. Set that back in here. And that's back in. Alright, now the wheel is ready to go back on. Alright, before I put my wheel on, I'm actually go this would be a good time to actually clean up the wheel real good since uh, you know, you don't have your swing arm in the way. Um, so all I'm using is some glass cleaner. I just mist it on and should pretty much all come clean. Uh, you're gonna have, like, if you're using the right stuff anyway, you should have, it's like sticky grease from your chain lube. Glass cleaner seems to pull it off pretty good. you know your preference I also since I had the wheel off took the time and cleaned out the uh, swing arm a little bit now it's time to put my wheel back on uh, you want your obviously your brake side on your um, right hand side and your sprocket side on that side uh, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put the dowel pin, pin dowels back into the wheel uh, they should be uh, basically you just push them in and the gasket will hold it in place. So I'm going to put the uh, brake side one in, then this one, pop them in, they'll just stay right in place. Now this is where it gets a little tricky. Uh, you're going to want to hold the wheel up and have the caliper positioned in the same way or in the same same spot uh, and line up the holes and everything so it can be a little bit tricky um, what I recommend is taking your axle bolt and just have it sitting here in the hole ready for you to push in uh, before I'm going, before I put this in, I'm going to put a little bit of grease on this. Just all purpose wheel bearing grease. Not a lot, just a little bit. Lube it up a real good. It makes it easier to slot it into place. When you're putting the lube on, uh, make sure you don't feel any rocks or anything like that. If you do, clean it off. Before you put it back in, so that's 
hands here. Okay. Like I said, I'm going to kind of prop the axle in the hole. Okay. Now it'll set me up so I can easily just slide the slide the axle into the wheel when time comes. Okay, so put this wheel back on. I put the caliper on the rotor itself and kind of get it ready to slide into the notch on the flywheel or the swing arm. Then I take my chain, set it on my sprocket, make sure my dial pins are all in. Work the axle through the holes. Ooh, too far. At this point, I got the axle uh, all the way through, even through the um, caliper bracket. Now I gotta line up the chain adjuster to the caliper bracket hole and slide the axle the rest of the way through. I kind of put my foot under the wheel in order to give me the wiggle I need to pop it through. Okay, she's all the way through. Forgot to mention that there's a washer on this side same with the washer on this side with the 19 uh, they might be the different sizes i'm not sure but they look pretty similar and i just thread on a 19 millimeter with the washer by hand keep it nice and loose all right after you get your axle in what you want to do is you want to pull back on your wheel just a little bit until you get the, most of the slack out then you got notches on your chain adjuster and you make sure that they are lining up in the same spot by counting the, counting the lines on the side. And when you're done, if you have the same amount of lines on this side compared to this side in the, in the uh, window, your wheel should be straight. And you want a total of one and three eighths wiggle room on the bottom part of the chain. And at that point, you can tighten down your, uh, your axle. Once you have that, it's good to go. All right, YouTube, that's gonna finish up this video of installing the uh, rear wheel dampers on my Honda Grom. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to show you exactly how to adjust your chain because currently my motor is not in my Grom. Uh, you just use the 12 millimeter nuts on the chain adjusters on each side, tighten them up until you got one and three eighths wiggle room on the bottom part of the chain and you have the same count of lines on both sides of your swing arm. If you have that, your wheel set, you're good to go. Sometimes when I do it, I actually uh, kick the rear tire to make sure it's nice and settled after everything is tightened. Just give it a good kick in the rear tire, count your lines again, make sure it doesn't move. If it doesn't move, you're definitely set. Uh, other than that, that's it. Um, if you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe. I greatly appreciate it. Till next time, take it easy.